Welcome Hello, to, to the football program in Provo, Utah. BYU's wide receiver core gets another uptick. This has been a very interesting week for Fessy Sadaki. Listen, <laughs> yes, it has. <laughs> and we love the, like, listen, the portal uh, gives us some stuff to talk about, man, which is great. Cody Epps left. Now he's back. But did he did even he ever really leave? Did he leave? And now Darius Lassiter joins Keanu Hill, Chase Roberts, and Cody Epps, yes, along with a core of young guys. Jerem, what does the Eastern Michigan transfer wide receiver specifically bring to the wide receiver group and BYU's offense? I think he immediately comes in and he's kind of your, your in the top four right there, which is awesome. And maybe he is one of the top three receivers at BYU. We'll see. Maybe, maybe he's the best receiver at BYU. He's going to get a shot to prove that this year. Uh, you like the height um, and size, 6'3", 200. From Chandler, Arizona, went to high school in Kansas, though. Looking forward to talking to him, hopefully uh, early next week. Played in all 13 games last year, 40 catches, 471, four touchdowns. Those are good numbers. Had two 100-yard games, uh, one against uh, Western Michigan, a little okay. rivalry game there. And then in the Potato Bowl, uh, had a nice game, six for 108 and two touchdowns against San Jose State. So he m immediately adds depth to that room. A guy who has proven at the FBS level, a former All-American in J.C., he is ready to go, and now he's got a Power 5 opportunity, which is exciting. Certainly there are other capable guys in the room, like we mentioned, those top three. Cody Epps, Chase Roberts, Keanu Hill. Brayden Cosper would have been in this group, by the way. He chose to retire. I feel like we forget his name sometimes. Let's put him out there. There are a couple of vets who, who want a chance to prove themselves, and young guys, we'll get to that in a sec, but I like the addition. We've known about this for a couple of days, just waiting for the official mention, you know, from uh, uh, BYU football, and, and here we are. So I really like it. Um, and he, BYU's not done. But they were going to add him whether Cody Epps left or not. This was kind of a pre-Cody Epps need. And again, I, I've said a lot, but Aaron Roderick told us at the end of spring ball, we've got five or six scholarships for receivers if we want to use yep. them. And they're, I don't know if they're going to get five or six. Maybe they will. But um, here's the first of several. There was some speculation that the Cody Epps news somehow prompted the commitment of Darius Lassiter. That was not the case. We have learned that it just happened to be coincidental timing. Epps was meant to be part of the group. Lassiter knew about it, and he comes in as a much-needed now fourth in the big four receivers. Physically speaking, he reminds me a little bit of Jordan Leslie, though he's two inches taller than Jordan Leslie. But he's 6'3", 200. Leslie's 6'1", 205. So I like his size that he brings. Epps is a much-needed slot-type receiver. I'm guessing if he had left BYU, thank goodness he didn't, we would sit, be sitting here and saying, BYU needs somebody smaller, shiftier, quicker in the slot. But now Cody Epps, again, is still in that, that place. I like Darius Lasseter's size. Uh, I like his speed. I think he's got great hands. I've talked to two coaches, and they specifically just say, oh, his hands. His hands are incredibly strong. Uh, we know what that means. Puka Nakua had incredibly strong hands. Lasseter is not the playmaker or the proven playmaker that Puka is, but they did say hey, his, his hands are every bit as strong as Puka's, and I think that carries some weight for BYU. So different skill set. Uh, I'm excited to watch him play, and I just, even though it's not Power 5 transfer, we're talking about a junior college All-American that has Division I yeah. experience. He'll get his Power 5 experience at BYU. Yes, he will. And I love that uh, he's got multiple years to play. This is, this is a good pickup for BYU and hopefully a guy that's going to be here until he's done playing football and then on to bigger and better things, whether that's professional or otherwise. That's exciting. He did, so he does have two years. That's exciting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I believe so, yes. Because yeah. he played two JC and one Eastern Michigan. So I'm just wondering how he gets a I believe the COVID there. exception is in there somewhere. Oh, gotcha. 21 JC something or other. Okay, great. Uh, no complaints. Uh, topic two, does BYU need to add more to the wide receiver room? I still think they need one more. I believe you feel like they need at least two more. If not more. At, at least two. At least two. At a minimum. At a minimum, just give me one more experienced guy through the portal, and then you've got five proven commodities. And if an injury or two, heaven forbid, happen, that's when so be it. Dom Henry and Parker Kingston come into so the mix. Be it. Exactly. But if you give me five experienced, proven receivers in that room, that's enough with the young core behind them. Yeah, it'd be great to have more, but I need at least one more. And 
from what I've been told, BYU is very, very active in the portal. They're talking to multiple guys who are making their visits this week specific to the wide receiver position. This week like today and tomorrow or next week? I, I was told this week. This I was week, told okay. this week is going to be very be busy, and yeah. they're hoping to add a few more critical pieces. That's great. Um, yeah, and who knows who fits where uh, in those four, by the way, with Lassiter. But I just like more experience in the room. So vets who want a chance. Hobbs, Nyberg, Talmadge, Gunther, Cade Moore, guys who have been here for a couple of years who, who were like, well, can I be in that group? Absolutely. They'll have a chance to prove that, right, in, in practice. But BYU is still going to bring in a couple of guys. Uh, freshmen or retro freshmen in no particular order who we're excited about in the future, and we'll see what happens, right? Kyson Hall, that's Jaren's uh, younger brother. Of course, Dawson's on the baseball team. Kyson's on the football team. Koa Eldridge out of Hawaii. Parker Kingston who had a, a hand injury in spring, didn't play a ton. Dom Henry yes. uh, from Florida. Devin Downing was uh, a year behind Chase Roberts on that American Fork squad that threw yes. for 10 million yards. JoJo Phillips is the kid from yeah. Sierra Canyon. Yeah, I like Paid JoJo's basketball game. Basketball, Bronny, uh, James. So that's, that's a good young group. Because it's the Big 12 and because we just don't know how hard that's going to be and what kind of options Keaton Slovis and this offense need, Yes, I think I'm with you. If BYU got one more, I'm good. Yeah. If they got two more, like I, Darius, ideal. Darius Lassiter plus, now we go, okay, we are ready for any kind of attrition that may occur. And, listen, uh, men's basketball, myself included and others, have been critical of the, like, well, uh, you know, oh, it's just a bunch of portal guys. How do we sort of sustain that? BYU football in certain spaces is investing in the portal more than the sort of homegrown guy in a way, where they feel like they need to get returns now. Like quicker investments as, a ter as opposed to the long-term investments of the high school kid who's going on a mission who needs a couple years to develop before he's an impact player. In that case, it's four or five years. In the case of like the offensive line room, BYU got like four or five guys out of the portal to be in that top eight to ten spots mm. uh, on the line. In the wide receiver room, you could argue BYU retaining Fs is a big deal. Granted, it was like a 48-hour deal, but that's like a Yoli Childs-like move there with BYU re-recruit someone to be here next year. And you need other guys that are ready now uh, because when you play at Oklahoma uh, or against Oklahoma on senior day, November 18th, you just need guys because you don't know what kind of ankle injuries and hamstrings and what. Last year... We didn't think, you know who's not going to play as much as we think? Gunnar Romney and Puka Nikko. We did not have that inkling or idea. The hope is you stay healthy. I think they played in one combined game in the first five weeks, right? Gunnar gets hurt in fall camp. I think he plays a total of like two games, maybe three or something. And Puka is not 100% all year. You just need good players ready to go at multiple positions. Like Jake Retzloff needs to be ready to go just in case. That's the role of a backup. So I'm excited about Lasseter adding to a good core of three. I, I wouldn't say he's the fourth dude right now. I don't know what he is in that group. He might be BYU's best receiver. I don't know. Let's see. But I like the group of four. If you add one or two guys with those kind of numbers at the FBS level, mm -hmm. I don't care if it's like you, G5 or P5. Sure. Obviously, if you've done it in a P5 league, that's awesome. You bring it in. Now BYU is cooking with oil, right? At running back, I am interested to see what BYU does there. It feels like the Cougars are content. Aiden Robbins is your guy, and then you got Hinkley, Ropati, Miles Davis as experienced dudes. L.J. Martin coming up behind him. Jackson McChesney, by the way, officially retired, retired from yeah. football, which was a bummer. How does Sol J factor into that room? Sol J is this hybrid wide receiver running back yeah. that they can use however they want. So um, it's, it's interesting to see it's a skill position. It's kind of what happens there. But you guys done a nice job in the portal in the offseason. I, I am more than pleased with the additions that BYU has added to football and men's basketball to feel like, okay, in football, you're going to give us seven and five plus, And in basketball, with perhaps one more piece, maybe two, um, you, could, you could be sniffing the tourney and make it interesting, which is the minimum we want in a basketball season is like, give us NIT plus. Give us a shot at the tourney. And in football, of course, it's always going to be bowl game. We'll add to that later. But in the first year of the Big 12, it's like, just get, just get to a bowl game. Another name I'm excited about, and I know we're probably 12 to 18 months away from seeing him like run significant routes at BYU, is Cody Hagan. 
right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, oh, just, yeah. I'm just really excited about what he will eventually yes. bring to BYU. Yes, I just, I just. Uh, He's kind of the next in the line of like solid return missionary guys, right? Like the next Chase Roberts, if you will. Yes. Yeah, I, yes. I, I like what Hagen brings. Are we Speaks most through. excited about future BYU athlete that's not playing this fall? Colin Chandler? Is he like the number one answer to that? <laughs> uh, yeah, right? yeah. He's roaming around in London right now. The if you fo if you follow him on his mission, he and his companion are like burning stuff for people in the community all the time. Sure. They have like a wood burner. They just burn it stuff. <laughs> How much does the tight end group, specifically Isaac Rex, make coaches feel better about not go not having to go get multiple receivers now? Like if they go got go get one more and they have five experienced guys and they've got Isaac Rex, does that somehow make things better? Does it make everybody feel better? Yes, but to me, they're just... Is there less pressure is what I'm getting at because you have Isaac Rex to go get multiple sure, receivers. Sure, but but those are different positions to me. Like, like yes, they're pass catchers, but, um, well, Jackson Bowers. We're stoked about Jackson Bowers. Yes, we are. Like, We're that is, about that is a baller coming in here as a freshman. And he's right. Like, he he's, is he's an going immediate to be impact guy. Perhaps BYU's number two tight end. All right, our question of the day. At this point, has BYU football, and we're asking big picture here, mm -hmm. think about all of the transfer portal moves, both leaving BYU and coming to BYU. Has BYU football gained more than they have lost in the transfer portal this offseason? I feel like we should probably remind BYU fans because it's been a minute since BYU lost somebody and Epps didn't end up leaving. But, yep. I mean, the Barrington brothers and Keenan Peely are at the top of the list, Gabe right? Judy Lally, Gabe Judy Lally also Logan follows Fano. Peely. Those are kind of the top five, okay. yeah. So, Jay Floyd 314 on Twitter says, it's been a big win for BYU so far. BYU's adequately replaced every departing rotational player and added several upgrades. Yeah, I, I think overall it's been a net positive because of quantity. BYU did not replace Clark Barrington with anybody as good as Clark Barrington, in my opinion. But the quality of multiple guys and the depth of BYU and quality at that position, I think, has been really good. Yeah, I look at it by position group. Has the defensive line gotten better? Yes. Has the, the offensive line overall gotten better? We think so. Have the linebackers the at least held serve now, even though they lost Keenan? Yeah. They went and they got some dudes, right? AJ Vong Pacha at Utah State. Experience. A absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So that just kind of ask yourself by position group, is BYU at least even or better than they were? And I think for the most part, this is leaning towards a net positive. 